this is going to be a, just a really great uh, mayfly spinner pattern. It's called the super fine sulfur spinner. So going with the three S's here. And in this case, only two of them are really going to be accurate. Um, we will use super fine dubbing. Um, and it was a spinner, which is kind of that dying egg laying stage of the, the life of the bug. When spinners are floating on the water, they're easy prey. Um, and yeah, you'll mock them dead. Just have this one as a kind of a, a floater behind your regular mayfly. And your regular mayfly pattern will be a strike indicator. But odds are they're going to take this one. For the tail, I'm just going to use three or four fibers from a wood duck. Um, I want this to be a little bit longer than the shank of the hook, so I'm going to kind of take my measurement there. Kind of like I always do, I'll take a wrap or two just to secure that to the top of our hook shank and kind of see where we are. Yeah, that's just about right. In fact, I might even want it a little bit longer. And then from there, we'll just go ahead and work backwards, keeping those fibers on top of the shank of the hook as our priority here. And then I'm just going to take that thread back up to the front. About there. We don't need to go all the way up to the eye. 75% or so is just fine. So for both the abdomen and the thorax, we're going to go with a super fine dubbing. Here I'm working on the abdomen and we're going to do it in a nice light Cahill. And I want to get that dubbed on pretty tight. I feel like I got a fish. I've got some bare thread there, which is what I intended. That allows me to kind of travel back right to where those tails start for our first wrap of dubbing right there. We'll have this taper a little bit, so we'll go ahead and move forward, maybe take a wrap or two back as we're working our way up towards the front. Just tighten that up one more time. And that's looking fine. So we've got this nice extended tail and a nice tapered but thin abdomen. So for the wing, I'm just going to use some white um, poly. This is McFlylon, but any white poly will do. We're just going to kind of tie that in on the top of the shank of the hook here. Turn our thread counterclockwise so that that thread wants to jump back to me, my fingers, and not towards the eye of the hook. And we'll get a couple of good thread wraps down here. With those thread wraps down, we really want these to angle backwards and we'll really accomplish that more um, when we're doing the dubbing for the thorax. But for right now, I want to just have two separate wings and that's kind of what we got. Um, the thorax is really going to make the definition here. So for the thorax, I'm actually going to be using more of an amber um, rather than a sulfur. I think it just makes this pattern pop a little bit better. And get that tightly dubbed on as well. I'll just take several wraps here behind the wing just so we're building up that thorax. We want the thorax to be thicker than our abdomen, especially right here where it joins. Once I've got a little bit of a, a bulb going there, this is where we're going to work on separating those wings a little bit better. So I'm going to pull one side back and try to keep my fingers out of your way as much as I can. We're going to take a wrap right up through the middle. Then I'm going to grab the bunch closest to me and I'm going to take another wrap right up through the middle. I'm going to just continue building up a little bit of thickness here in the back. And then I'm going to kind of manhandle the wing a little bit, get the wrap started in front of those two wings. And I really want those two, those two wings to slant backwards as much as I possibly can. So I'm going to have to use some kind of jam wraps except with dubbing to force them backwards.
The good thing about Polly is you can, you really can manhandle it. It's not going to break on you. You know, we have a little bit of fixing to do, but I think you're starting to get the point. Um, from here, we'll just go ahead. I'm going to build up a tiny little head. That's why I'm using the orange. It just blends much nicer with this amber dubbing. And aside from trimming the wings, we're, we're pretty much done. I'm going to give myself a little bit of extra thread. Do a nice whip finish here. When you're whip finishing, you want to go from the front back to the back so it gets a little thicker as it's moving backwards. Make sure it's nice and tight and seated. So we want exaggerated tail. Um, that's way too exaggerated wings. So we're planning on cutting them off from the very beginning. So we're going to kind of stroke upwards, get those two sides together. I want these to be about the length of the shank of the hook. From there I can go ahead and pull those back down. And with that, there you have it. The sulfur, the super fine, sorry, sulfur spinner. Um, great spinner pattern, again, for the mayfly. Like I said at the beginning, I, I would put a mayfly at the end of your, your tippet. Then I'd put 18 inches to 16, 16 to 18 inches uh, tag on the end of it and let this little guy kind of drag behind. It's gonna lie really low in the water, so it's gonna be a little bit hard to tell. So your mayfly up front is gonna be your strike indicator. Certainly they may take your, your mayfly as well, but uh, the, the done. Um, but the spinner is easy pickings and you'll knock them dead. So throw yourself a hook in the vise and give this one a shot. Mm -hmm.